Hello, another Dr. Spotfire quick tip video. My name is Jose Libeguirre from Spotfire and today I'm going to show you how to run a JavaScript or Iron Python script every time a page is loaded, every time a page is visited or revisited. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here I have a dashboard and I have a dropdown with three different values, uh, 30 days, six months, I'm going to change that value. My visualization at the bottom is going to show the corresponding uh, date range. But what if I have, what if I want the default value to be six months? I click the reset button and then I see the six months. But now I don't want to have that reset button click uh, manually. I want to have that button click programmatically. So for that, you need a little bit of JavaScript and uh, that is going to trigger every time the page is visited or revisited for the first time or for, for any time. So let's for, for example, I, I ch uh, change that to 12 months. My default view is six months. I go to this page and when I go back, the JavaScript triggers and then it puts the default value or the default view, which is six months. Let me walk you through on how that works behind the scenes. If I select the, set, the text area, I'm going to see my dropdown. This is my dropdown. And the dropdown has three distinct values. Right now it's set for six months. You can see the value here is six months. That's the one that is selected here and in the dropdown. And these are the different values that I have. Now the reset button, what it's going to do is going to assign this value, which is my default value, and it's going to assign it to the document property. And that's how it works. Let's look at the reset button. The reset button triggers this Iron Python script. I'm going to click edit and you can see that the document property date range expression is being assigned for this custom expression. So if I change this to 12, which is one of the other options and I run the script, now the dropdown is consistent with the document property value. If I change uh, to nine months, what happens if I change to nine months? I don't have that option in my dropdown. So if I do that, it's going to work. It's going to work on my visualization, but my dropdown is not going to be able to display that value because it doesn't find that value within the option that already has. I will have to add it. But in this case, I am going to go back to my default value, which is six. If I run the script, it's going to go back. But if I put zero six, it's not going to match because it's a string and that is not going to be exactly the same. And I run into the same issue. Even if I have a space at the end of my custom expression, it's going to be the same thing. So I have to be sure that the custom expression matches one of the options of my dropdown. Okay, so now let's go back to the final step, which is how to run this uh, button programmatically when I go back to this page. So let's go to the 12 months, make sure that works, go back to the page, the JavaScript runs and it go back, back to the six months. For that, I'm going to now edit my text area with HTML because the JavaScript is only available, is only visible through the, uh, I have two text areas here, but this is the text area that I'm, I want to edit. So the JavaScript is only visible when you edit the HTML. And I also want to add some HTML. In this case is this uh, span tag that I'm going to wrap my my reset button. This is my reset button. As soon as I select, uh, Spotfire selects uh, highlights where my, um, my reset button is. And I'm going to wrap it with this tag. Uh, and I'm going to identify that with an ID called uh, the reset button. Now let's look at the JavaScript. The JavaScript is right here and it's very simple. I'm going to edit it and this is what's happening. The document query selector is going to find the reset button uh, and then is going to uh, find the input element, Spotfire, um, the, the reset button renders when it renders to HTML, it renders as an input. So that's, this is my query selector. Uh, you don't have to worry about how that works. It's just uh, technical stuff, but it's going to run the click command, but it's just for you to know how, how it works. Uh, it's going to read the click method, and that's basically clicking programmatically the reset button. Now, let's say that you don't want that button to be visible, and you might have different use cases. For example, maybe you have a a button that will trigger a Python script that will run a data function or refresh a data table, or maybe uh, it's going to log the number of visitors that uh, that page is being viewed. So there are different use cases, but this is just one of them. So I put the hidden uh, attribute here on my, my uh, wrap uh, tag, and now the button is not visible, although it's still running when I go back to the page. So let's go to 12 months, click on one page, go back, and it's going to run the script and going to uh, and it's going to go back to the 12 months and that's it i hope you like it and please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos and see you next time